This video is for chapter one. Uh, chapter one is going to be uh, short. This video is not going to be very long. It's just basically um, an intro into the whole topic in general based on energy usage in the United States. Before we get into that, let's just go ahead and um, we'll look at this table and kind of look at the different um, quantities of energy just to kind of give an idea of um, basically what is a watt and how much how much energy is a watt, right? How many watts does something consume? Because sometimes we hear the number, but we don't have any context for what that number means. So if we start with something small, like the human heart, uh, the human heart is about 1.5 watts. And we go up to a light bulb, right? An incandescent light bulb could be about 100 watts. Uh, you start increasing there, you get to the uh, uh, human working hard, right? You're looking at about 0.1 kilowatts, um, a draft horse would be about one kilowatt. If you guys have a portable floor heater, you know, plug-in floor heater that um, converts electricity into heat, you're looking at about one and a half kilowatts. A compact car, about 100 kilowatts. SUV can be up to 160 kilowatts. Um, we start going now into bigger um, energy producing um, machinery, such as a combustion turbine. Right, we're looking at 5,000 kilowatts or five megawatts. A Boeing at cruise speed, a Boeing 747 at cruise speed is about 250 megawatts up to Niagara Falls. The Niagara Falls power plant um, when running is at two gigawatts or 2,000 2, megawatts. Now, let's look at energy consumption in the US compared to other countries in the world. So this graph is taken from your book on the y-axis. You have energy consumption per capita. And then on the x-axis, you have um, gross national product per capita in thousands of dollars. And you can see that the U.S. and Canada as well are um, towards the top, right? And then um, you can see sort of this line. And as you, as you kind of go down this line, you can see... Um, where other countries in the world lie. I mean, here you have a lot of um, you know, developed countries in uh, Europe, Middle East, and Japan. And then you have some other countries that um, start to also um, appear as you follow this line closer to the origin. So the U.S. obviously has very high energy usage. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, we could uh, go ahead and uh, have different opinions on this. Uh, if you were to go ahead and search the internet, you would get a lot of different, um, not a lot of different, but you would get some different um, answers based on people's political conviction and things of that sort. But some things that are out there, um, for example, the, so there's going to be some sources that say, um, you know, the United States is large, right? I mean, we span a huge land mass. The United States spans a huge land mass. And so um, transportation is a big thing. And we use um, a lot of tractor trailers, diesel, you know, they consume diesel fuel to transport goods. So transporting of goods is uh, something that consumes a lot of energy. We don't have as developed of a rail system, for example, as they would in Western Europe. But um, so transportation of goods, uh, there are other things we produce a lot of goods as well is consumed by the world, so transportation of goods outside the country as well. Um, uh, we have very um, diverse climates, so depending on where you live in the United States, you'll be consuming a lot of energy for cooling or for heating. There's also the fact that um, our, you know, if you look at the road, there's a lot of vehicles. If you travel the world a little bit, you'll might notice that a lot of other countries don't have as many large vehicles, SUVs, for example. Um, some might argue that the United States doesn't um, is not concerned with energy consumption as much as some other places might be as well. So all those things uh, um, could play could play into it. So this is a discussion that one could have for uh, a very long time, and at times it could be also a heated discussion. Um, Big question too is is this a thing of the past right are there going to be other countries that are on this chart that are eventually going to climb up to 
the same amount of energy consumption as the United States, right? For, as countries become more and more developed, they're going to require more energy usage. And there's argument also about how much energy is available. If you were to look at fossil fuels, for example, um, it's finite, it's not infinite. Um, there's argument as to how much there is and how much there isn't. But I think the one thing everybody can agree on is that it's finite. And so as countries become more developed and energy consumption increases, um, it's going to obviously put a drain on the world's sources, resources. And so when is the um, uh, point of reckoning, right? The point where uh, the world is consuming more energy than can be produced. Um, even putting aside the issues of, uh, of climate and um, questions of climate change and things of that sort related to energy consumption, just the question of having enough energy, right? And so there needs to be um, obviously a increase in um, or, uh, research into looking at other forms of energy. And that's where renewable energy has come into play. They can play a significant role into that as um, technologies improve in renewable energies. The idea is that more uh, energy consumption can be diverted to renewable, renewable sources, um, kind of relieving the need for finite sources of energy, such as uh, oil, for example. Um, not to mention the positive impact it would have on the environment as well. So uh, the rest of this presentation is going to give some general views on um, energy consumption and production. So for example, this graph looks at on the y-axis, we have energy consumption per capita. And on the x-axis, you have years, starts in 1960, goes up to um, 2014. And this uh, yellow line and um, green line represent energy consumption in the United States during that time period. So you can see this has increased dramatically. Uh, France and Germany have also increased, um, although not to the same order of magnitude as the U.S. and Canada. Uh, United Kingdom has increased. China has significantly increased. If you look at just from 2000 to 2014 alone, during that 14-year period, you have here about um, an increase of four times during a 14-year period in terms of energy consumption per capita. And then also, if you just kind of pull that all together into the world, the world's energy consumption is um, increasing uh, every year. If we go back and just look at the U.S., um, this is a uh, source that I often pull from that gives uh, a breakdown in different ways on energy consumption uh, by energy source in the U.S. Um, so if you look here, we have that about one third is through petroleum, one third through natural gas, and um, you have the other third split between renewable, nuclear, and coal. And then if you go ahead and look at just the re that 11% of um, renewable energy, that is split out of that 11%. If you were to go ahead and look, 2% of that 11% is geothermal. Um, and then you have solar, wind, biomass, biofuel, wood, and hydroelectric. So biomass waste. So biomass is a little under half of renewable um, and then you have hydro, which is about 22% of that. So again, this source is from the Energy Information Administration. It's taken from their website. Uh, this is also another um, graph that's pulled from that same site. It looks at US energy consumption by source and sector. So again, if you were to go ahead and take that um, US primary energy consumption by energy source on the prior slide and put it into a um, different form here is basically into a bar and splits the bar up according to percentage. But if you look at sector, you know, you can kind of look at it in four sectors. You've got transportation, consumes about one third um, of our energy consumption. We have industrial, which is about another third. And then a combined uh, residential and commercial 
makes up about not quite a third, but a little over 20 percent. Here are two graphs that are kind of superimposed um, next to each other. You have the U.S. primary energy consumption by major sources versus the U.S. energy primary production, right? So if you look at production, we get, um, again, we, uh, over time, starting from 1950 up to 2000, um, I believe this goes up to 2016. Correct. Yes, that looks like no. I'm sorry, 2019. So this line here would represent 2019. You would have um, again the split in terms of renewables, nuclear, um, natural gas, liquid, uh, crude oil, natural gas in gas form, and then coal. And then over here, you look at the primary production. So you have what's produced versus what's consumed. So, in, in short, a large part, still significant part, most of our um, energy consumption comes from uh, comes from uh, consumables, right? Consumable um, finite fuel uh, energy that comes from finite sources. So, the idea of this course is to um, make you aware of the renewable technologies and where things are at. Um, in the hopes that uh, that technology develops over time and that this green portion, which represents energy production um, by renewables, will increase and take up more percentage of energy production overall. Um, and here is just another way of looking at the same data. Um, again, we have um, on the y-axis, primary energy production in quadrillion BTUs. And then each uh, bar represents the different um, form of uh, energy. So we have natural gas, crude, coal, um, in order of magnitude, down the nuclear, um, natural gas plant liquids, biomass, wind, hydro, and then a combination of other. So um, that ends this uh, video. Again, this is a was a short video meant just to give an introduction to the course. So um, again, we will go ahead and continue uh, in uh, chapter two by uh, starting to kind of lay out specific renewable energies where each chapter will kind of cover a different aspect of uh, a different type of renewable energy. Thank you.